Knuckles the Echidna is my all-time favorite Sonic character, and one of the most misunderstood video game characters in modern gaming. The current outlook on Knuckles is that he's an idiot comic relief, but I feel that's an egregious misrepresentation of one of the best Sonic characters. His debut in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles established him as the most unique character of the classic era. He's an organic opponent who can fight without machinery. He's also not evil. He's the, albeit, naive guardian of the sacred Master Emerald who's been set up by Dr. Eggman to fight Sonic to defend the powerful gem. He means well, and as soon as he saw the whole picture, he does the right thing. Sonic never had a complex character like that before, who goes from an enemy to a reliable ally. Knuckles brought added layers to the classic games. The underrated Sonic Adventure games made him even more three-dimensional. In Sonic Adventure, while Sonic and Tails are blazing through a traditional high-speed journey, Knuckles goes on a solo excursion where we learn his thoughts on being the lone guardian of the Master Emerald, and we see how responsible and even sensitive he is on keeping it safe. We also witness the dark history of his people abusing the Emerald's power. By the end of SA1, we see the contrast between Sonic and Knuckles. While Sonic is a cool extroverted teenage hero, Knuckles is a cool introverted teenage hero. That makes him relatable to a lot of kids. Not all kids are happy-go-lucky and hang out with their friends every day. A lot of kids like to spend time alone and think to themselves. That's not to say Knuckles is always alone and doesn't care about his friends. He does work alongside his friends, and of course he cares about them. In Sonic Adventure 2, his friendship with Sonic is developed further. Despite their rocky history, they easily trust each other to work together. The two's bickering causes the rocket's less than stellar landing on the Space Colony arc, but after Sonic's escape from death via his first use of Chaos Control, Knuckles helps him up and asks if he's alright. That feels real! Sonic Heroes has him opening up much more to Sonic and Tails, acting like their older brother figure who travels alongside them. He's much calmer and likes to joke around a little, but it's not at the cost of his dignity. We'll get to this later. And that's Knuckles, the compassionate, introverted hero. The Dark Era started a steady decline in his character towards comic relief territory. Here's the main problem with that. He isn't needed in a few of these games. Sonic Team had a compulsion to include him in almost everything, so he's in the story with nothing to do. He served no concrete purpose in Sonic Rush other than demolishing a boulder that was blocking Sonic and Tails, even though there are over a dozen ways for them to deal with that. In Sonic and the Secret Rings, he was just there as Sinbad. He's the least relevant of the supporting characters in Sonic 06. So what material was he given? He throws Sonic Eggman's Hollow card, which one of his robots could have easily done. Other than that, he has little impact on the plot. He felt like such a waste in that game, and making him look clumsy really doesn't help. Sonic Brush Adventure and Sonic Unleashed had the right idea to not shove him in them. He would have just stood in that about saying, So, I did like him as Gawain in Sonic and the Black Knight, the hot-blooded knight who's always ready for battle. The first two Sonic Riders games did a few interesting things with them. In the first game, he has a rivalry with the bulky goon Storm the Albatross, who coincidentally has the same build and intellect as his Boom counterpart, making this the closest we'll get to Knuckles fighting the Boom version of him, who is closer to what a lot of people think he's like. In its sequel, Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, he's shown to be more intelligent with him translating ancient text, and I like that addition. So the Dark Era was hit and miss with Knuckles. The colors in Boom eras... Ugh. Okay, these games were obsessed with being safe and child-friendly, so their number one priority was being... funny. Knuckles had his dumb moments in the Dark Era, sure, but here, he's a full-blown dunce whose sole purpose is to be the hopeless butt of the joke. In Sonic Generations, Knuckles is thrown to a tree by Amy Rose because it's... funny. In Sonic Lost World, he's carried away by woodland critters because it's... funny. In Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, he has trouble telling between left and right, misinterprets every figure of speech, and acts like a brain-dead moron because it's... funny. Overall, he's never allowed to be like traditional Knuckles and spend time alone because that's a tad dramatic, and kids can't handle drama. Looking at you, MCU Spider-Man. I don't mind a funny moment here and there, but when comedy is the core factor of the story, certain characters will end up feeling alien. Sonic Forces was a step in the right direction, but he needs more to replenish his identity. Look, I love Knuckles. He was such a good character, and this comedy phase proved to me that modern Sonic team either don't know how to portray someone like him anymore, or they just don't care. I want him to get better. 
So for the upcoming 2021 game, I want Sonic Team to remember what made Knuckles special, and for him to be relatable again. I don't want him to brood like in a Zack Snyder movie, and I especially don't want him to reference his previous adventures as compensation for lack of substance. Knuckles is a hero. Quiet kids need heroes too.